Hey there everybody, it's Peter from Indigo River Tiny Homes and Christina and I are here today to talk about our tiny house trailers. Everybody's always asking, what's so great about Indigo River Tiny Home trailers, right? So we're here to tell you. <laughs> all right. All so, about it. All about it. Over <laughs> the years we've built on at least eight or nine different tiny house trailers uh, dip from different manufacturers that, and we've taken all our experience building on all those different trailers and come up with a design that we think is the best on the market. So we're gonna go over what we've come up with and show you why. So uh, we can start right here at the hitch. So this is a bumper pull trailer. This has a heavy duty adjustable height hitch. And so uh, you can adjust the height of, the, of this hitch based on the hitch height of your truck that's pulling it, which is very important because you wanna make sure that when you're towing your trailer, that it is level because if it's uneven, you know, then that could put more weight on some of the tires than the others, which can cause a blowout. So it's a very, it's important to, to that your trailer is level when you're towing it. Um, then we got a 10,000 pound jack here for the uh, hitch jack which is heavier duty than what most trailer manufacturers put on their front, the front end of their trailers. And then we have on the And you can upgrade to the motor. Yeah, we have, there's a motorized option for that. Yeah. If you're gonna so be traveling with a lot. The uh, corner jacks, we have four corner jacks on the bumper pulls, two on the gooseneck trailers, but we use a heavier duty uh, 7,000 pound capacity jack on the corners versus three or five that a lot of other manufacturers use. All right, so the frame of the trailer is made with six inch by two inch by quarter inch rectangular tubing. And then on the edges, so the rectangular tubing runs all the way down from front to end inside the fenders. And then outside the fenders, we have these outriggers, um, which can be insulated because uh, some of the trailer designs that we're using in the past had a flat bar here and where you had to drill through it and bolt your bottom plate of your framing down to that bottom that bottom plate but it had no insulation there so in the winter time uh, some of our customers were getting condensation down around their baseboards so we decided to go with this outrigger design which a lot of other uh, trailer manufacturers use as well but this can be insulated so that eliminates that issue the other thing with the on the outriggers is starting a foot back and then every four feet we have these half inch all thread rods which are welded to the frame to mount the bottom plate on them. We have the bottom plate sitting here uh, just to mark it out for the holes and then we're gonna pull it off and when we do the framing for the walls. And then as you can see, this has a wood underbelly. A lot of manufacturers will do a metal underbelly uh, we prefer the wood, this is pressure treated plywood, and we screw that up from underneath. Because uh, the main thing for the underbelly is it just, it's just there to hold the insulation and keep critters out from under your house. And so it doesn't have to be steel, and we prefer this because it's a lot easier to work with. Because when you're trying to drill a hole through it for your plumbing or um, anything else that you've got to make a hole through the floor, through the subfloor for a uh, drain line or anything like that, uh, it's a lot easier to drill through this than a piece of sheet metal. And then you can see we have some electrical wiring run, running through there as well, which saves a lot of time for us um, drilling holes through, the, trying to drill the holes and pull the wires through the side walls. So all of this stuff, besides the, anything that's not black metal, we put on this trailer right. after it arrives. So if you order a trailer from us, it's just gonna be the metal trailer with these screws. It does come with the all thread yeah. rods, yeah. And then all the wood and all the, you, everything that you see here with the wires and all this the underbelly for the plumbing. The wood, the screw the underbelly too. We, in, we installed all that. It would come without that, just, just yes. open metal underneath. And then we'll just give you instructions on what you need to put. You know, that'll be in the plans if you, if you buy a trailer from us. Yeah, and then uh, we can talk about the fenders here. The fender is made of, it's a structural fender, so you can put your two by four framing directly down on the fender, made with three inch plated steel with gussets in between the tires. 
Hard to see. There's a gusset. <laughs> yeah, black on black. black. <laughs> so, yeah. And let's take a look at these tires and, and axles here. These axles are 8,000 pound rated axles. Um, a lot of manufacturers won't do the 8,000 pound axles, they'll only do 7,000. So when you do a trailer this size, you know, you're gonna be over 21,000 pounds. So you end up having to go to a four axle system. So we wanted to keep that fender smaller. And so we're doing triple 8K axles on our, on our trailers for a 24,000 pound rating. Um, and then these are 14 ply tires instead of 10 ply tires. So they're able to support that extra weight as well. And so then- So I usually just say our, our trailers are way beefier than <laughs> a lot of other they are manufacturers. So th this is the, the information of why, how and why it's beefier. <laughs> <laughs> right. So maybe more information than you really want to know, but it, uh, is, it is important. Um, and then the suspension system that we use, this is called a slipper spring suspension. Um, a lot of manufacturers, in fact, most of the manufacturers that we've used in the past, all use the rocker arm system. And the problem with that is it has these shackles on there. So uh, that can sometimes get inverted, especially when you go to the quadruple axle. When you go to that quadruple axle and you go over any kind of dip, one of those axles can, can drop down and the shackle inverts and, that, and then that pulls the tires together. So the tires are rubbing together. So you have to pull off to the side of the road, remove the tire, jack the trailer up. I guess you jack it up before you remove the tire. Pop the shackle back into place put the tire back on and all that takes about 45 minutes to an hour sitting on the side of the highway. After you've done it, that's if you're experienced doing it. So right. It'll take longer the first time because you got to figure out how to do it. Right. <laughs> and using those quadruple axle systems with the rocker arm suspension, uh, I've gotten stuck on the side of the road at least seven or eight times with that problem. So it, it's... So serious. we fix that with this different that's right. Rocker arm suspension, is that what you called it? The, that's what they, ha they use, we use slipper spring. Oh, sorry, we use slipper spring. Yes. Which is, we like that better, we don't have the... Right. It doesn't have the shackles that, that pop out, it, so even if you did go to a quadruple axle, you still wouldn't have that issue, but we still want to ha keep that fender smaller uh, just for, to conserve that indoor space. Then we've got uh, marker lights all along the edges. So, there's one. To meet uh, DOT requirements. There's one. Tail lights. Another thing about the axles, every axle has, a, has an electric brake on it. Um, and then you can What's see. What's this little white thing? That's a tail uh, for the license plate light. Ah. And then you can see down through the middle, uh, some manufacturers use a three by two steel here going across and one going the length. We use two by two uh, and then a four by two running the length. And what that does is it gives us an extra inch inside the space. So you see how we have a lot of this plumbing run in here. So whenever we have sinks that are over the axles, you know, there's, there's not a good way to get that, that drain line oh, down behind past the axles to where we can drop down below the trailer for to join in with the rest of the plumbing before we were having to run that those drain lines inside the cabinetry but now with this extra space we've got that gives us enough space to run that drain line in the subfloor and drop down once we get past the axles so then it drops down right and then you can see we've got some pvc tubing around our around our wires in some places that's in around some of our pipes uh, that come up through the subfloor uh, that's because we're, we're going to spray foam the trailer and the guys use a big four foot sawzall blade to cut the foam off the off the top and they're always hitting the hitting the pipes and the and the uh, wires with that with that blade so we just put that 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 sleeve around it to protect that's it whenever protection. we just spray foam yeah and then before we do that, we're gonna finish uh, sealing up all the underbelly here, seal up all the seams so the foam doesn't come through. All right. So and we can do deck over trailers. We've we done, yeah, we've we can done do deck a few over. Of those. Um, what and else? Gooseneck. Of course, gooseneck, yeah. Yep. Next time we have a gooseneck, we'll make a video to yeah. show that one. I think we'll have one coming in everything? in about a month or two. I think that's I everything. Mean, what's that's the main basic features. Stuff that 
So our axles are rated for the weight of the house. That's different than most. Well, a lot of builders are not. <clears throat> of course, you can order your trailer. Yeah. However I've, you want it to be, but. Yeah, I've seen a lot of builders who don't weight their axles properly and that axle is just sitting right on the frame because the spring doesn't have enough strength to even support the house. So it's, it's really got no suspension on there oh. at all. So, you know, I think that's So yeah, so we build our homes to move more than once. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, once a year is probably what we would recommend unless you want to get the upgrade for the traveler's package, if you're going to move more often than that to get the SIPs paneling. But our trailers are always this beefy, <laughs> whether you get the traveler's package or not because we want you to get have a good foundation for your home. Yep. All right. Let us know if you have any questions. Leave a comment. Hit like. Hit subscribe. We love you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye,